and Santosh al second. Okay. Okay. So yeah, recording started. Okay. So here it is. The topic is cloud computing. What is a cloud computing? It's a only one simple definition is delivering of computing services over internet. You can see there is a two underlined points. These two underlined points is the main point of cloud computing. Okay, delivering of computing service or internet. What are the computing service? What are these services? Servers related, servers, storage, databases, network, softwares, different type of things like analytical related, intelligence related. And these are the different types of services we can access over the internet. You know, I'm using Google Docs. Google Docs is also one of the cloud computing service, software as a service. I'm taking attendance in a web browser. In the Excel sheet, I'm accessing in the web browser. But how it is possible? Office 365. Office 365 from you because of our organization is subscription for the Office 365. I'm getting this Excel. Two Excels. You can see this is a, a desktop application and this is online Excel. Both are there. Why I'm using online? Because anytime I can access through this one. I don't need to search in my desktop. I can simply search in my OneDrive. And I can easily share your attendance sheets to my organization people. To Ravan sir or Madhu sir, I can able to share it very easily. Okay. That is software as a service. So not only like it, I, have, I want a database. Okay. A storage services, networking related services, software services. Okay. Uh, yesterday we discussed about uh, virtual machines. Okay, so there we discuss. We create a virtual machine, install an operating system, and install an application. I have a computer. For me, I can create. I use some softwares like a Oracle VM Virtual Box or a VMware Workstation or VMware Player. Okay. I can create a virtual machine, install a, a operating system in it. I can run an application for my purpose. Only if the my physical system infrastructure is supported. Okay, that is we discussed yesterday. Another point we discussed centralized virtualization. It means my organization maintaining a data center. There is a, a Proxmox servers are there. We use a Proxmox. Okay, for a hypervisor purpose. Okay, some organization use VMware ESXi, some organization use Hyper-V servers. Some are use Citrix Gen servers for a centralized server virtualization. So we, when I want a virtual machine, I ask that administrator, he will create a virtual machine for me and install operating system as per my requirement. I will access the virtual machine and I install my application and either to test the application or to develop some web web application a database application there and make it as that one as a database server or a web server or a, some application server or maybe a storage server okay so this is what we are doing okay so this is different servers so this time i can access these servers from the cloud okay so what is the difference so how it is so we'll go from the simple basic concept called a, a data center maintenance. So this is my, in my organization, I have, a, a, mine is, for example, okay, so my, in my organization, for example, you take a, uh, Zomato, uh, Swiggy, a lot of e-commerce websites are uh, Flipkart, Amazon, Blinkit. Okay, a lot of e-commerce websites are came up now. So different type of uh, uh, services came to uh, market uh, through the internet, right? Flip, uh, uh, Facebook, um, and Gmail, uh, like like different types of services we, we got into the internet. So we are accessing our side, we are accessing the services. Right. So you want to 
do the payment like a phone pay payment so you have a mobile application and you open the mobile application scan this qr code and do the payment from your side it is a client side application but when you have scan the qr code you got who is the vendor the name it will shows and you tie give an amount and select the bank okay and give the pin number then a request go to the your bank and amount is detected and transfer to the that vendor's bank and you will get a transaction successful but it means the request this entire process has to be done by someone right your app won't do all the things in, in your app only thing is you have to scan it and if you are getting uh, internet connection is required and scan the qr code and who will be, how it will verify how your app knows the vendor's name and does not know it has to send a request to the phone pay or a google pay that uh, server and verifies the qr code with their databases and their database will fetch the name of the vendor and it will shows like yeah is it your name yes then type the amount okay then you are already up registered banks list is there so select your bank give the pin number request go to the again your phone pay google pay paytm and then from there to your uh, bank so the again bank will detect amount and it will transfer to the vendor and bank gives you transaction id and it displays yes payment is successful so in not only in your mobile phone process guys it is also the process actual process background process runs at a servers so database servers are there okay application servers are there so we can connect and we are getting the process from it you know usually we go after lunch to outside uh, for uh, you know small snacks kind of stuff or anything outside so ptm is full busy evening time paytm phone pay google pay are become busy why because it is a lot of people came that time only okay so because their main service uh, has to be done so what those companies will do it like you you, you order a food uh, in the swiggy or uh, maybe um, a swiggy insta mart uh, you want to buy some groceries or something okay so what happened what actually main companies what they will do it they'll maintain their infrastructure related different servers are required for web related access web servers are required for databases database servers are required okay application servers are required so because of your application your web application is running websites we can access from web servers but actually what are your uh, data you are seeing that uh, pictures uh, the um, the things like you add a uh, particular item and you are go to the cart and paying so this is entirely application who is providing this android application the application server so it can be it will run your python program or java program or in java scripts phps all these applications will run at a application server database server you store your data and fetch the data when you are connected when you are requesting something okay okay like this so you need a service <laughs> but there is a possibility like authentication servers database servers application servers web servers are required and if web server is down you can't access the service the user cannot access the service so what they will do it they will create a a replica it means it's like a load balancer and failover already we discussed uh, in uh, some servers classes okay so we need a load balancer and failover what is this load balancer and failovers if in case one of the server is down one of the server is down other server will provide a service so the user will get always service high availability it means you deploy multiple servers in a cluster 
all are providing same service if one of the server is down no problem other servers will continuously provide a service the user is always getting a service this is called high availability failover high availability even one of the server is down still the user is getting service okay next one as i said earlier okay high availability and failover and one more is there load balancer you know lot of demand increases suddenly the demand increases so lot of demand on the server increases lot of traffic is there it has to process one by one so almost all morning of uh, afternoon one o'clock all are doing some food orders 12 o'clock 12 till 10 12 30 to 1 o'clock 1 30 almost food order service start okay so how much burden on the server lot of people will access right so in the one single simple city you take it so a lot of people start doing orders mainly office colleges where the places are there more burden on the servers so one server cannot handle so what you have to do you have to deploy multiple server as a cluster <laughs> okay and balance the load between these servers so what happened even the sudden service increases so it will balance the load initially so one server is can able to handle normally but now the demand increases number of users are increases we cannot always increase the ram capacity processor capacity of or a network capacity of a server instead of vertical scaling we'll do horizontal scaling what is vertical scaling vertical scaling means vertical scaling means you increase cpu capacity ram capacity network capacity or storage capacity for a single server that is vertical scaling what is horizontal scaling deploy multiple instances multiple servers in a cluster so they all work is same only and they balance the load in between that okay so that is what horizontal scaling this is one mark to okay. Guys, understand high availability, load balancer, and uh, um, fault tolerance are a failover, horizontal scaling, vertical scaling. Yes, sir. Very good. Very good. Okay. So, organization is required. If one of the server is very busy, you know, in a olden days, my, I don't know now, recently I didn't go to any banks. But in a olden days, you go to the banks, railway stations. The people will always say, yeah, server busy, come back later. You go to ATM, server busy, come back later. Now people are, very less people are going for ATM, banking, okay? Still people are going because they are facing a lot of other issues. But still, simple thing is, so server busy, okay, come back later is, become reduces because of this additional load balances. Even not only for web servers, database servers. One database server is failed, you cannot fetch the data. So you can have to add multiple servers, failovers, storages. You have to add it. Of course, if you have a <coughs> multiple servers, means they have to connect it, right? Yeah, they have to connect it. So they have to use switches, okay? Fiber optical switches, routers to communicate from one network to another network, we need a routers. We have to connect the devices and uh, make a communication between them. We need a switches, switches, routers, fiber optical cables, okay? UTP, STP cables, internet connectivity is also required. So dual internet connectivity, one is legal line type of connectivity, another one is so backup internet connectivity is required. Public IP addresses are required. And if you are connecting to the outside of network, you need a protection, you need a firewall kind of stuff. Checkpoint servers, 
cyber security related stuff also you have to do it okay and this room has to be <coughs> physically close this room has to be physical access also you have to provide okay only a specific people only can able to enter you know ceo of the company google ceo who is the google ceo sundar pichai is there now he want to enter into the google uh, uh, data center is not allowed he has to ask a permission from google uh, uh, that's administrator data center uh, uh, management person is there so that person only can able to give access okay so he will uh, uh, give signature take a signature information and he can allow the user to access so like a physical security you have to provide who can able to access who cannot able to access and you have a server so i already have told about a server networking component other than that one you have to maintain the environment okay environment you have to maintain like a ac you have to provide okay oxygen you have to provide carbon dioxide like oxygen mixture like a, it is a closed room you should not allow any dust inside if any dust is there it may be give a problem so you have to properly maintain cooling systems no into inside to outside outside to inside um, uh, air flow is not there okay so you have to carefully manage the in and out okay, air flows okay oxygen mixtures not too much oxygen not very less oxygen because less oxygen people who are working there they will die because of lack of oxygen more oxygen the small spark is generated big explosion will occur because oxygen helps to burn small spark small spark what happened because of more oxygen it gives more burning ability so it will burn your entire data center okay of course your data center required power supply the data center required power supply is required and is any guarantee for a guarantee power supply of from the uh, stations no right something is happened then they will cut the power small rain is came cut the power okay your data center continuously 24 by 7 it has to provide services to the customers okay so you have to give continuous power supply to data center if power is gone you have to, you have to plan for a backup power supply okay you have to plan for a backup power supply in a power supply not only from one substation you have to take it from the multiple substations two three uh, substations you have to take a line from there means one substation is down so another from another substation you will get a power but total power outage is happened so you need a backup power supply like a ups but ups is very less time one hour two hour support only you know how much bigger ups you take it but its support is the limited time only so what you need you need a Uh, diesel generators power generators are required again generators required diesel a power is outage ups is almost over and you power on your generator and the guy said no sir diesel is not there and you have to go to petrol bank and find out diesel how much diesel is required for entire data center that much diesel you cannot uh, get very easily right so you need a storage the diesel storage is also required see it is i have suddenly stopped talking about a servers network and all i am talking about a power supply simple <laughs> okay so it is uh, why i am telling uh, i will give you that point okay so that is not only your server networking components and cables firewalls uh, network security uh, cyber security kind of stuff but also there is a other physical components also there other things also there like your environmental maintenance means the temperature you have to maintain properly okay temperature you have to maintain so you have to maintain with some acs cooling systems you have to maintain okay physical security you have to maintain 
and you have to give proper power supply and make sure that is continuous power supply one is out raises other means okay and other way you should give the power supply to your data center and there is a, a monitoring system is also there for monitoring this all these basic uh, main environment aspects one monitoring is there and another side monitoring of this data center is also important which server is is busy which server is uh, more resources are available which server is all resources are available which application is consuming more server resources okay so what is the status of your router network components so what are the data transactions is it any additional um, cables you require to connect or you have to increase the uh, networking capacity to communicate faster okay okay any load balances you have to add it so because of these three servers are all are full and already all three servers are uh, crossing the 70 percent so you have to add more uh, servers to balance that load okay so that data center monitoring is there so they will i think you have already seen that is uh, uh, entire your global infrastructure you can able to monitor from single dashboard using this uh, uh, monitoring tools like in Nagios is our one example op manager okay using op manager Nagios prtz okay uh, some other uh, solar winds network monitoring tools also there okay. using the monitoring tools you can monitor your data center to make sure that your uh, network uh, status device status network related uh, device status network status ip address status server status there's cpu ram resource consumptions packet in and out to the to the network ports of servers okay so entire thing you have to monitor okay to maintain the servers to maintain the servers this physical servers you have to maintain it means you need a, a server engineer okay you need a person who can estimate the cost of the server and they will go into buy a service if requirement is increases initially started a business with uh, some uh, 50 lakhs uh, uh, cost with a basic uh, servers now it is demand increases you have to keep on increase your infrastructure so because to fulfill the demand outside so you have to invest the money on your purchasing of components so that is called a capital expenditure what is capital expenditure so you started a business so you are providing a certain service to the customer you have to maintain the infrastructure so first of all you have to buy the infrastructure right you have to buy infrastructure it means you have to buy servers you have to buy operating system licenses you know if you are using windows server it definitely required windows server license is required okay so so you have to buy hardware operating system licenses application related licenses you have to purchase it purchase cost is there routers switches cables firewalls all these things you have to buy okay you have to buy this backup power supplies air cooling systems okay physical security systems uh, uh, legal lines public ip addresses all these things you have to purchase it if you are purchasing it is that is called a capital expenditure up front cost up front cost what is up front cost you have to pay immediately <laughs> okay you have to pay for your infrastructure this complete infrastructure you have to pay that is called a capital expenditure guys understand what is capital expenditure yes sir okay sir. then it goes for a operational expenditure what is operational expenditure yeah you purchase infrastructure uh, for your servers routers switches operating system applications these acs power supply things 
uh, all these things you purchased it good but you have to maintain it you have to make sure it is running so you need a people tools you need a people and tools to manage this the infrastructure so, so someone has to monitor the how much is the power supply is going on correctly is the temperature is going on correctly you like it and physically anybody is who is entered who is leaving like that a physical infrastructure physical security also should be monitored another place network monitor how the network is working uh, uh, there is a server and there is a, something has to be installed it means server engineer has to go and uh, install for that server okay so network engineer maintain the network related things server engineer maintain the servers okay system administrator maintain this uh, system administration related means active directories domain controllers are there they will maintain it like that okay so local access remote accesses vpns again separate people are required network security people are required cyber security people are required so there is a possibility of lot of attacks from outside so you have to check with the cyber security to protect your applications and network and data that is very important so lot of people are required to manage your infrastructure and maintenance cost is also there you have to pay for the people you have to pay for the tools like a monitoring tools kind of stuff and anything goes wrong like a demand increases again you have to increase your infrastructure either by adding more servers or a increasing server capacities home print capacities all these things are important so this is called a operational expenditure operational expenditure operational expenditure means maintenance cost maintenance cost for example you you build a building so think like you purchase you want to build a building you have to buy the land you have to buy the cement sand iron uh, all these things items you have to purchase it and you have to give it to some person so then the, he will design and uh, then construction people will come and do the construction once construction is completed that is not end right so you have to maintain okay so your buying means purchasing upfront cost it means it is capital expenditure and maintenance comes under operational expenditure so a medium scale person a small organization or a, a medium uh, scale organization cannot buy this in much of infrastructure the small infrastructure okay they can offer no problem because it's a startup okay but their demand increases their infrastructure has to be higher to maintain the customer requirement customer demand they have to maintain this infrastructure but they cannot add because the more money they will invest on the capital and the operational expenditure how they will get the money to get a new invention kind of stuff another like they have to pay for developers okay so they have to pay for the developers maintenance people service uh, supporting people service desk people also there okay so people who have to work on the databases people are there java people are there okay devops people are there so <laughs> It has become a more headache on the organization. So what is the best solution to avoid to maintain their own data centers? Okay, what is the best solution to maintain the data center? One of the solution I'm telling, renting a data center. Renting a data center. It means there is some data center service providers also there. Like you can see cloud 4c that's a new name for a cloud s uh, control s earlier name is control s now it is cloud 4c the cloud 4c is a organization so they have data centers based on my requirement i required four servers uh, some uh, 10 terabytes of uh, storage like 100 terabytes of storage is required and uh, these four servers one server is for web server one is application server one is database server another one is some other server like that 
okay i need what are the requirements i'll approach the da data center company what are my requirements i will give it them they will build they will create one network between these servers as per me and give the control to me so i am not maintaining any physical infrastructure and i am not paying for anything for capital expenditure i am not maintaining the data center maintenance person only maintain all these things but mine is i am accessing the service so no capital expenditure no need to buy new servers so there are already purchased it so i am using the servers okay so what is my administration of server is that was only i will do it i no need to do any power supply kind of stuff uh, maintaining temperatures okay uh, networking components and all i don't need to do it so they will i what are my requirements i will give it to the cloud uh, data center uh, service provider means the renting guy i'll pay for the usage whatever i am taking what i am taking not usage exactly say what i am taking i will access it okay that's it i am not buying not maintaining anything okay this is a good solution right understand guys renting a data center means buy uh, means your rent some servers storage matter related to your project or your application purpose you thought capital capital expenditure or operational expenditures you are only paying what are the things you are required to ask your uh, that uh, organization understand that point renting Yes, sir. Very good. Someone is added. Okay, Kalyan. Okay, good. Good members today. <laughs> okay, the next one is, what is the flaw of this renting model? Okay, of course the cloud is also kind of renting model only, but this is and cloud has little bit differences. Okay, small difference. What is it? suddenly i need a two more servers i already taken four servers suddenly i required two more servers again i have to go to the the service provider and ask add two more servers to my network again he has to allocate two more servers from his data center to my uh, project related and connectivity and configuration little button and additional payment increases now i have six servers earlier four servers now i am added a two servers because of the demand increases good good very good no problem but after a few days that much demand is not there literally i am using only three servers okay i required only three servers not six servers because the demand is no more for the next six months no servers for example this is a rainy season rainy season umbrellas and what is that uh, rain coats and more sales and wicks vapor <laughs> another one these are only having more sales okay and winter season blankets summer season uh, you, you, you who will wear this rain coats in summer season okay so in a certain place times the season changes you know in a in a in certain period of time in there we don't eat non veg the demand of chicken mutton will be reduces <laughs> okay some people don't eat anything outside for a certain month so automatically demand reduces so you that demand increases so you add a two more servers then it is six servers now demand reduces just you required only three servers okay whether you purchase it or renting it 
and if you are not using it still you are paying for it even you are not using right now you have to pay for it okay so you, you take in generally four but you are added to and now it is six but actually utilization goes up to three only so obviously the extra three you are paying again you have to go and tell discard then that engineer that their data center maintenance again remove their your additional data uh, servers and you have to pay for what you are using on but that much not easy both same but not easy if you already purchased it you cannot do anything but you are renting it of course you you want a four rooms and you need more two more rooms you purchase you you take in two room rooms extra for few days then you said no 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 i want only three rooms then you pay for three rooms and you can leave for the remaining rooms right it's a simple concept but not much easy every time you have to do something agreement uh, again you have to revise the agreements all these things little difficulties also there okay and it is all geo isolations you are owning your own data center or you are renting a data center from person it is geo isolation it will be located in one place only for example my data center is in hyderabad my client is in chennai or my client is in singapore my most of the clients are working in uh, in a uh, uh, virginia okay maybe melbourne or sydney maybe in malaysia okay so geo isolation that is one more problem of this model like you owning your own data center or renting a data center from one place okay geo isolation guesting certain places are more vulnerable places are there you know why hyderabad is it is developed not because of some politician not because of some person or uh, some area people okay so everybody is try to claim it it's mine it's mine it's mine like that it is not because of the people who are uh, want to put a data centers in hyderabad they actually ibm is the first one so they verified this globally so which place is having a uh, resources like uh, roads and uh, important is electricity less fighting like a uh, it should not be near to the sea the oceans are sea it should not be near not near to the rivers also no floods no earthquakes records okay so there will environmental damages and uprisings like you know some places always they go for fight they will burn some buildings they throw stones they put a bombs okay so that kind of places also there in the world in the world i'm telling not only india okay there is lot of things will happen and to where the more vacant places are available so like that so they will put a list of things and one of the centers selected is hyderabad of course next one is bangalore bangalore and hyderabad is more it uh, cities okay why because it's it's not near to the ocean first of all and uh, no earthquakes no uprising kind of stuff okay environmental uh, danger is not there and governmental wise also uh, there is no danger in a, in those areas and we want to jobs also people who Oh, easily work with less salaries okay so that's it is certain places are selected to build their data centers that is also important for example i place a data center and a confident uh, i put a one data center in that one two three servers are there for load balancing and failover but something is happened at that place in that place in that physical in place for example it is near to the ocean something like hudud sufan came so what happened to my data center something problem is occur all my data applications information is there in the data center only it is entirely destroyed right so company literally goes for a down okay that is not a good idea so your data center must be globally distributed so it means 
in us one data center in melbourne one data center in uh, uh, sri lanka or maybe uh, malaysia one data center or maybe new new zealand one data center okay hyderabad one data center bangladesh or another data center like that so you have to keep your data into different different places this is called dr disaster recovery geographical distribution geographically distribution small companies cannot offer it one data center itself capital and operational expenditure is more more headache so for small organizations they cannot offer to geo distributions and dr kind of stuff okay so this is geo isolation if you want to go from geo isolation to geo distributions so more cost on a organization but you have to keep a data safe that is more important okay so these are the another problem with your owning your own data center part so what is the solution again i told about rental and owning your own data center and both are having small small issues and what is the better solution is your cloud okay so how cloud benefits over the owning your own data center it means on premises data center that is called on premises or premises yeah, people are having more english okay on premises means you are owning your own data center or renting a data center this is also on premises okay and how this cloud benefits our this kind of stuff okay the first one is high availability you guys understand what i am telling <laughs> something yes sir okay so how cloud is benefit it delivery of computing services over internet with a pay as you go model this is good one cloud computing is a delivery of computing services over internet by using pay as you go model okay why it is pay as you go model is important because of whatever you use in the cloud you have to pay for that one only not whatever you are not using it okay so for example you need a four server you take a four server you pay for a four server so you want six servers okay you are attached another two more servers means you have to pay for six servers as long as you use for six servers now six servers are not required three servers only are required simply yourself only remove the remaining three servers keep your three servers alive and you are paying for a three servers okay so it is a pay as you go model what are you are using that much only you are paying no capital expenditure you need to buy any servers here no need to build your infrastructure and no need to go for any vpn uh, or legal lines connectivity is also not required really not required um, in a, so up to certain point in some point like a hybrid cloud kind of stuff you may require the legal lines for additional security or some other kind of stuff but really you can access your infrastructure from anywhere any time can access your infrastructure applications data from anywhere any time through the internet and what you are using that you have to pay for it okay that's a exact point of cloud computing is delivery of computing service over internet by using pay as you go model what are the services servers storages databases networking softwares like that extra extra and uh, like a uh, analytics intelligence kind of stuff also okay so it is simply renting a compute power and storage from someone else data center but little bit difference already uh, that we will said but what is the advantage of this cloud computing high availability high 
availability. So you need to worry about a, um, this one server is down, other server is has to give services, right? So generally, the entire base infrastructure will be maintained by cloud service provider. In generally, 99.99%, it's like a not more than one hour or two hours per year. Okay, so your services always available. Accidentally also, their data centers won't be blessed in general. But still, there is a requirement. Load balancing is required and failover is also required. Both are important, right? So you can simply add, simply you can create load balancing. Means you create one server and you said, you create another server and between them load balance. Simple with a simple click, simple click, you can create a load balancer and failover uh, infrastructure in your for your organization in the cloud. Scalability, I already explained the scalability. Increase, ability to increase your infrastructure or a network. Ability to increase. Ability to increase is called a scalability. High availability or failover load balancers. Okay, scalability. What is scalability? Particular scalability means increasing the capacity like RAM capacity, CPU capacity is called a vertical capacity. Horizontal ca means by adding more instances, similar instances. Computing capacity by adding more instances to your resource, then it is become bigger like you have a, a one server is there. Now the demand increases. You can add more servers so then it will balance the load between them. That is called an auto load balance. Auto load balance. What is auto load balance? You can add more servers to your cluster. Automatically, it will be balanced between the servers. If demand increases, automatically, number of instances will add it to your resource and it balances the load. And one more important property is elasticity. 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 <laughs> okay. Auto scaling kind of stuff it is. Okay. Uh, it means, as I said earlier, you need uh, the demand increases, you need to deploy more servers to balance the load, right? And demand decreases, you have to remove the server. If you are using a, your own data center, if you are using your own data center, it's very difficult to leave it like that. So you are already purchased, demand increases, you add more servers. Physical servers, you are deployed. So what happened? Demand is now good. Based on the demand, you are able to provide a service. Now demand is reduced. Demand is reduced. You don't require these servers right now. Physically, what you will do it. You have to make it. You are already purchased. So no use of it. You have to maintain with that uh, big services only. But our cloud has a auto scaling property. It means demand increases. Demand increases. Demand increases. It add these additions, additional instances to your resource. Then it will fill our load auto load balance between them. Means auto scaling. Auto scaling means when demand increases number of instances will be deployed and auto load balance between them so it will fulfill the demand now demand reduces again auto scaling what is again auto scaling it reduces demand reduces as per the demand only it calculate and reduce the infrastructure size and you know, when demand increases, six are required. For example, you deploy six instances and you pay for six. Demand reduces and it is to come down to the three only. Okay, earlier demand increases. It deployed totally six you are using. You pay for six. 
servers, for example. Okay, demand reduces auto scaling, elasticity it reduces size. It means you are using right now is only three instances. So how much you are paying for three only? Okay, you are not paying for what you are not using. You are paying for what you are using only. That is the main purpose of cloud is elasticity. So more important in out of all the features of cloud, elasticity is a very important because it can able to do auto scaling, auto load balancing. It expand your infrastructure and collapse your infrastructure depends upon demand increases. You guys understand elasticity, scalability and high availability. Yes, sir. Agility. What is agility? Agil agile means keep changing. Keep changing. Okay. You know, your, for example, your infrastructure uh, maintenance people, your client uh, required some changes uh, in an in a application level or a service level. Some requirement changes are asked. So you can easily adapt those things. Suddenly, if you are maintaining your own data center and someone's like, you know, I want this type of storage or maybe this type of application has to be deployed. Okay. Suddenly, you got a, your organization got a um, SAP server uh, has to be deployed. SAP server has to be deployed in your infrastructure. For that one, you have to go to buy a new server which is suitable to deploy the SAP application. Okay. So that will take time and a sudden adaptation is there. And you purchased it. After three months, your client said, no, 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 I don't want it. I want another version. Okay. Again, it is headache, right? So keep changing is very difficult in the fixed environment like on-premises data centers. But in a cloud, yes, you can, whatever the client requirement, you can take it and easily adapt it. You can simply deploy a, a SAP a server in the, cloud and you can start working on it in case of three four months some changes occur a client is and say no i don't want a service right now so i'm shifting to another company so what you do with your infrastructure no problem delete it <laughs> okay no need to pay next time you're only paying for what you use your usage is done no need to pay so you simply remove that in one so that is what eh? agility agility means so when any changes, configuration changes or infrastructure changes are, so simply can able to adapt it. Geo distribution and disaster recovery, those things also I told. So in on-premises data centers are geo isolation type. What is geo distributions? The cloud service providers generally, what are the top level cloud service providers like AWS, Okay, on premises that, oh, sorry, 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 this is disturbance. Okay, on premises, uh, compared to the on premises data centers, this AWS, Azure, GCP people, what they are doing in a globally, they have a different regions. In the regions, they have their own data center. Like India itself, we have a two AWS uh, regions are there to, uh, six data centers also there. For Azure also, we have a data centers also there. Globally, it is distributed. Okay, it is in different regions. You can go to AWS site or Azure site or GCB site. Check it globally distributed their regions and they're inside different data centers. Okay, you can deploy your applications or data into these regions. For example, I'm in India, but my customer or my clients are in uh, New Jersey. I will deploy my application in New Jersey region only. So why should I uh, go to my data center? So it will take lesser time to access by the client if i'm if i deploy into the one second one is 
if i deploy my if i keep my application and data into different regions if one of the region is down but other regions still we have a data okay so one of the reason is down in case something is happened very big war is happened or earthquake is happened or tsunami kind of stuff is happened so that entire that region is down unaccessible but still my data my applications are available in a different place that is called a disaster recovery so these are the main advantages of your cloud yes understand geo distribution and uh, uh, disaster recovery yes sir okay so other advantages lower your operating cost so no upfront cost no upfront cost okay first important is no capital expenditure no operating expenditure only thing is so depends upon our requirement we whatever the cloud related services we use it that only we are paying okay scale as your business needs okay so for example i got a new business that required uh, some infrastructure is like a the huge data uh, storage is required and multiple uh, uh, servers are required different types of servers are required different applications are required simply the from cloud service provider i will take it use it as long as the business is running good i will run once if work is completed i don't no longer require that much i will reduce it or maybe i will remove it okay that is important so then when requirement is comes that we can easily adapt we can provision deprovision your resources very easily in the cloud run your infrastructure more efficiently you put okay you can treat resources like your like you would resource in your own data center so it is there in the uh, cloud but still it is your acting like a your own it once you are done using them you can give them back your build only for what you use instead of maintaining cpus storages in data center you rent them from the time you need them so whenever required you will take it once work is completed give them back the resource provider take care of maintaining underlying infrastructure for you so cloud is maintaining the main data centers it means the servers virtualizations and then uh, uh, network related storage related everything will maintained by okay your service provider okay both capital expenditure operational expenditure both will be maintained by them only so you can only to pay anything you know it. pay only for usage purpose okay cloud enable you to quickly solve your toughest business challenges and bring cutting edge solutions to users okay lot of lines are there so you know i heard one example uh, that is also feel very good example uh, but not to speak right right um, but i will tell that example uh, you know nowadays uh, we have our own internet in our home okay and most of the people are having printers in their home laptops in their home so for example i have to do some work then i need some for example for that work i need a internet connection and then a desktop or laptop and a printer so i need internet a desktop or laptop and printer okay so what i have to do first i need to get internet so i purchase internet then i need a laptop or desktop so i have to buy some desktop or laptop and fix in my car, uh, home next i have to buy a printer then i have to connect all these things make sure it is working my work is a uh, one hour work maximum two hours work that's it only then it is completed no no work after that one maybe i will get it but not i know it is not there okay only for one hour or two hours three hours max only 
one to two hours only it is there okay not more than that one but i'm i have to buy internet i have to buy a computer and i have to buy printer so what is the best solution go to any nearest internet center go to any internet center they have already internet so you don't need to buy that is already there you know before all these things you know most of us my, from my diploma onwards almost like last uh, um, 15 20 50, more than 15 years we use internet centers for this purpose <laughs> now almost all every home we have internet uh, and uh, printer kind of stuff so very less even we have office in office also you can do all this stuff okay point is Okay, the point is, uh, uh, yeah, so go to internet center, they will provide a computer and uh, you will get internet access and do all your work. Finally, what are the documents you want to take a print out? Give the print, they are also having a printer, right? So they will charge for a internet for one hour for our internet charges, they'll charge for a your printer access also, right? Number of prints you given, for example, 10 pages you given a print, per page it is two rupees or five rupees, they will charge and you pay for the print access, you pay for the internet access, plus computing access, you'll do it, okay? Maximum uh, 20 rupees to 50 rupees or 100 rupees, you pay and you cover your work is completed. You don't need to pay for a computer. You don't need to pay for buying a printer. You like a, no need to buy anything. No need to maintain also. You don't need to maintain that computer. No need to maintain the cables. You don't need to maintain the printer cartridges. So no capital expenditure, no operating expenditure. Just use, done, pay, that's it. So that is uh, one of the uh, a significant example for uh, an understandable example for what is exactly cloud means the pay as you go model means okay not exactly cloud is say pay as you go go means let's understand example Fast, fast. Anything? Understand the example, guys. The internet center printer, maybe you're not seeing. <laughs> Your generation may not know. Very less people know. Maybe if you are in a towns, maybe you may know. Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Some people are having a lot of. Uh, okay, small, small points. Then we'll go for next. No upfront cost. Okay, cloud computing is a conventional based model. Service provider operates on a conception model. So which is means you end user only pay for resources they use. Whatever they use is what they pay for. Okay, conception based model that many benefits include no upfront cost means no capital expenditure. No need to purchase and manage costly infrastructure that user might not use in fullest. You buy a servers and all, but you may not be used that much capacity related. And ability to pay for additional resources when they required. So I need some storage or database services also. I can able to pay for that one. So I, if I am able to pay, I will add those resources. I will use the resources. Able to stop paying for resources that no longer required. For example, I don't require now database related services. I will remove the database service. So only only for the virtual machines only. I mean servers only I will pay for it. Or maybe some application only I am paying for it. So which service I required, I will add it and I will use it and I pay for it. Which services are not required. So I no need to pay for that one. That is what this conception model means. Okay. 
this is not properly aligned if it is properly aligned then it is looking good actually okay again what is the cloud that you delivering your cloud computing services over the internet using pay as you go model and this cloud computing model having three models so cloud computing has a three models are there one is private cloud another one is public cloud another one is hybrid cloud one second
Sorry guys, it is very big call. I think you got a little bit of refreshment also. Yeah, so I will complete this uh, cloud model and the services. Then I will give you a break. Then we will explain all these things after break. Okay. Okay. I think uh, better to take a break. I will explain this private cloud, public cloud, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service after break. Okay. I have taken for a long time also. I got uh, exhausted. Okay, sir. Okay. Come back at 4 20, 4 20. Come back at 4 20. Have some coffee tea here. Okay. 20, 25 by 25 also. Okay. Take a break and relax. Yes, we'll sir. continue. 